Let's look at some diagnostics as well in Poisson regression models. Um, so I will introduce some um, residual analysis briefly, just to sort of um, introduce uh, some of these ideas as well. Although we have already discovered that based on the um, log likelihood uh, test statistic and the Pearson chi-square test statistic, um, the model may not hold, but let's look at what it does to the residuals and introduce um, what type of residuals there might be for Poisson regression models. And then we can later on extend our model to a more sophisticated model, in particular using a categorical variable uh, in the model or using another explanatory variable in the model. Um, so let's look at diagnostics in Poisson regression models, residual analysis. And let's continue with our example from our previous session about the recall of stressful events. Um, residuals represent variation in the data that cannot be otherwise explained by the model. So that's quite a nice feature generally about um, residuals and they can help us. Residual plots can help us to understand uh, our model better and to uh, diagnose any particular problems. So the residual plots uh, can be used to discover certain patterns, certain outliers, misspecifications of the models. So basically, ideally, we would like to see a sort of random uh, pattern in our residual plots. And if there are some sort of more systematic patterns, then we can um, identify uh, certain particular problems and it can help us to reformulate um, the actual model. So if the residu residuals exhibit no pattern, then in a way that's a good uh, indication because that would imply that the model is um, probably appropriate uh, for the particular data at hand. Um, I would like to introduce um, three different types of um, residuals for Poisson regression models. So the raw residuals would just be the um, difference between the observed and the expected values. The Pearson residuals um, are, uh, or the standardized residuals are uh, basically the raw residuals divided by the square root of the expected values. And then also the adjusted residuals, and they uh, can be rather helpful for actually the, uh, the um, diag diagnostics and the actual plots that we are going to look at. So that uh, is defined as the observed minus the expected values divided by the standard deviation of these um, observed minus expected values. So basically we've got uh, adjusted residuals uh, that we would like to uh, look at and to use for our um, residual plots. So if H0 is true, um, the adjusted residuals have a standard normal distribution with a, a zero mean and a standard um, a variance of one. Um, so basically, um, at least for large samples, that should be the case. And looking at that for the recall of stressful events example, that basically means um, that uh, we look at the adjusted residuals and we would like to see um, yeah, how they uh, compare. So we compare the observed and the expected values divided by uh, the standard deviation of that. Um, so we obtain the adjusted residuals and uh, for each category, basically for each month, we look at uh, the um, adjusted residuals that are greater or smaller than 1.96, comparing it with the normal distribution that would hold if H0 actually holds. And if you see uh, this bigger discrepancy, so uh, adjusted residuals larger than 1.96 or smaller than minus 1.96, that would give us an indication that there is um, divergence from the H0 hypothesis. So if the adjusted residuals follow indeed the, the normal distribution, which is true under H0, we would expect uh, roughly uh, one adjusted residual being larger than 1.96 or smaller than minus 1.96. So we would only uh, be finding one uh, large or very small adjusted residual we would expect. Now looking at the, the actual data, we, we saw that in months 1, 3 and 4 we had actually positive adjusted residuals and in months 16 and 17 we had negative adjusted residuals that are a larger uh, or smaller than 1.96. Um, and basically we, we see that it's actually more likely to report uh, more recent events. So the positive residuals means that observed data is larger than the expected data and it's more likely to report a stressful event in the months immediately prior to interview. <coughs> so we do see uh, some sort of time trend uh, probably in our data set that obviously isn't captured with the equiprobable model. So we want to um, uh, define our model uh, in a better way or improve our model and we, we see uh, in the next session how we are going to do that. Looking at the plot of adjusted residuals per month, we also see uh, a downward trend. So the adjusted residuals are on the y-axis 
and the months are given on the um, x-axis and we can see just by plotting those types of adjusted residuals that there is a downward trend so again it's not a random pattern there's a downward trend and we might see basically the sort of time trend. Another way of looking at um, residuals um, are the normal QQ plots um, so basically these are probability plots that um, plot the quantile of one distribution with the quantiles of another distribution and here we would like to compare the distribution of the observed adjusted residuals with the um, expected residuals i.e. the normal residuals from a normal distribution. Um, so basically here um, yeah and Q stands for quantiles i.e. for a quantile against quantile plots effectively. Um, so basically we are plotting observed quantiles against these expected quantiles and hence we have plot or we plot quantiles of adjusted residuals against the quantiles of the standard normal. That means that the points should actually lie just on the straight line of the y equal x line, um, at least if the adjusted residuals indeed follow the normal distribution, which is true under the h naught hypothesis. So again we can uh, compare divergence uh, from the h naught hypothesis. And here looking at the um, uh, QQ plots uh, from this particular data set, we can see that in the tail, so in the upper end and in the lower end, there is divergence from the straight line uh, relationship. So again, we would conclude that there is some kind of time trend uh, in our data set. So conclusions are clearly that there is divergence in the tails from these uh, straight lines. There is overall strong evidence that the equiprobable model doesn't really hold, doesn't fit the data that well, um, which maybe isn't too surprising. And we would like to, uh, or we'll see sort of more likely, uh, or we see that the data is more likely to report recent events. Uh, so basically such a tendency would result if respondents were more likely to remember recent uh, events than, than distant events. So basically, uh, again, there is strong evidence that we should be using some kind of other model and, and which one to use. And we are going to now explore the Poisson time trend model, a Poisson model with a covariate.